Angelina Jolie. Narcissist, Part 14. Conclusion. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Recently, I have been examining Angelina Jolie. I have been considering the evidence to determine what is she. Is she a narcissist, or might she be something else? Could she be an empath? Might she be a normal individual? Might she be narcissistic, but not a narcissist? In order to make that determination, it is appropriate to examine a wide range of material, and that is what I have been doing. Looking back at her early life, her childhood, looking at her relationship with her father, with her mother, examining the many intimate relationships that she's had. What happened in those relationships? How did they end? How did they form? What do people say about those relationships? What do the other partners that she had have to say about them? I've examined the fact that she would self-harm. I've examined her drug use, the attempted suicide attempts, the fact that she is a successful and well-known and wealthy actress. I have looked at her also her extensive philanthropic activities and well-known humanitarianism. There's the relationships with her children in terms of the number that she has, some that she's given birth to, others she has adopted. All of this creates a very rich tapestry of information with regard to Angelina Jolie and creates complexities with regard to what she might be. As you know, when it comes to one individual behaviour, there can be different drivers behind it. So, take for example, let us say that there are a number of neighbours and there is a neighbour who is the normal. This means that they will have emotional empathy for their near neighbours because they fall within their circle of emotional empathy. The empathic neighbour approaches the normal neighbour and says, Would you please look after my dog? I'm going to go away on holiday for two weeks. They ask politely, recognising the boundary and exhibiting emotional empathy. The neighbour accepts. And when the empath neighbour returns from their holiday, they buy a bouquet of flowers for that neighbour. Why is this done? Well, it is because that particular empathic neighbour has taken such a step driven by their emotional empathy. They don't necessarily have thought to themselves, oh, I better buy this because they've done me a favour. They would just do it naturally, guided by their emotional empathy, guided by their empathic traits. So they show consideration for the fact that this person has done something for them and they think that it is only right, decent and proper that they show appreciation for it. Their actions are governed by their emotional empathy. The narcissist is going on holiday and asks the normal neighbour, please will you look after my cat for two weeks? On return, this mid-range narcissist also buys a bouquet of flowers, similar to what the empathic neighbour has done. But because we know that this neighbour is a narcissist, we know that they have not done that governed by emotional empathy. Rather, they have done it because we know they're a narcissist to assert control over the normal neighbour, to draw fuel by way of their thanks and appreciation, and also potentially to manage a facade with regard to the other neighbours to show that they are a good neighbour. The unaware narcissist, of course, believes that they've done it because they are a kind and decent person. But in the circumstances, what has happened is that they have done it governed by their narcissism, in a similar way to the way that the empath bought the bouquet of flowers because they were governed by their emotional empathy, the narcissist has committed a similar act, but there is a different driver. It's driven by their need for control, fuel, and the residual benefit of facade management. The third neighbour is narcissistic, but not a narcissist. They, too, are going on holiday and ask the normal neighbour, will you please look after my pet tortoise for two weeks? The normal neighbour, again, exhibiting emotional empathy for this neighbour, agrees. On their return, the narcissistic neighbour purchases a bouquet of flowers, just like the empath did and just like the narcissist did. 
Why have they done so? Well, they do have limited emotional empathy for their neighbour. However, with them, they don't have a pathological need for control like the narcissist. Instead, the narcissistic individual operates out of self-interest, not in the pursuit of the prime aims like the narcissist, but rather that they see that they're going to go on holiday again in three weeks' time and they need to keep this neighbour sweet so that they will again look after the pet tortoise not long after they've had to do so already. Accordingly, their act of purchasing the bouquet of flowers is a manipulative act which they know is manipulative and is being done to keep the neighbour sweet, i.e. to service their own self-interest. Three neighbours, three bouquet of flowers, three different drivers. And that's why that little example there gives you insight into why it's so important to ascertain what a person is so that you can then use that information to then see through that prism to interpret their behaviors and understand why they do as they do. Often, it isn't entirely clear, and that's why my expertise is so important. You will find that individuals who are narcissists not always are red and tooth of claw all of the time. Indeed, that's pretty rare. Lessers stand out quite readily as being difficult and awkward, and the mid-rangers and graters are often harder to spot. Indeed, the mid-rangers and graters will often engage in behaviour that could cause you to even think that they were empathic, and hence that is why such scrutiny of detailed information over a sustained period of time and the consideration of that material in aggregate is so important. Angelina Jolie, as a prominent individual, is an excellent opportunity to analyse somebody who, on the face of it, does appear to be rather difficult. However, the level of success and her philanthropy and humanitarian acts cause people to question, as the difficulties that she's shown it's just eccentricity, do they arise out of vulnerability and that there is a huge amount of emotional empathy active here? that she's dealing with unresolved childhood issues occasioned as a consequence of the way that her father behaved. I'm going to round up all of this information from the previous 13 parts to enable you to understand what Angelina Jolie is. In order to do this in an effective way, I'm going to do it by way of a live stream because I know that you all enjoy those. It will give you an opportunity to express your views as to what you think Angelina Jolie is and possibly change those views as you listen. This is going to take place on Sunday, the 6th of August, at 3pm UK time, 4pm Central European time, 10am Eastern American time and midnight Eastern Australian time. Naturally, the video will be available for all to access after the live stream in the usual way. But this video has been created to ensure, because YouTube is not always the most effective at giving you notifications, that you have due warning of when this is going to take place so that you can keep your time free, ensure your alarm clock is set, that the children are given some gin to keep them quiet and that you ensure that your mother-in-law who has been staying for three weeks is finally kicked out so that you can listen to your glorious narrator in peace. So join me, HG Tudor the Ultra, when I conclude the series about Angelina Jolie and determine what is she. I look forward to your company.